What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Tactical Advantage. Uh, today what we're going to talk about is a little bit different from uh, what I'm normally doing. Uh, I'd like to, to get together and talk a little bit about soft body armor and the application of body armor as a civilian. Uh, you know, if it's even remotely feasible to use and deploy in the civilian world and um, what the benefits are or the negatives. Uh, predominantly, we're going to be focusing on a product that I've been testing for a few weeks from a, a company called Safeguard Armor. Uh, they're located in Colorado, and I'll put up some links and I'll talk a little bit more as we go through and we look at the product. But uh, I've really been trying to work on the application and using this, this body armor really as a civilian. Can you use it in the real world? Uh, is it a fallacy? Do you, do you really need it or is there something to it? Uh, I have some pretty strong opinions on this and as we go through this we're, we're definitely going to look at the product. I'm going to give you guys some close-ups, some real detail on what it is and uh, how I feel about it. And uh, that's about it. So thanks for stopping by guys. Let's check it out. Alright folks, so again what we're looking at today is a, a product from Safeguard Armor. Uh, USA based company in Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, in particular, we're looking at the Stealth, uh, which is one of their covert uh, body armor lines. Uh, obviously, soft armor, as we spoke about. This isn't a plate carrier, uh, though it could be retrofitted to take plate. But really, to, to skip all that, the first thing we're going to look at is this is how uh, the product was shipped. Uh, it comes in a nice carrying case. Uh, it also came out in an element proof bag which is really nice uh, I don't know if a lot of you guys are familiar but soft armor or Kevlar based armors you really run into an issue if they get extremely wet it loosens up the fibers and can contribute to uh, I wouldn't say failure, but less than optimal performance uh, from the, the bullet stopping material or the Kevlar or there's, you know, Cordura, a couple other different things that people use, uh, polys or, or poly mixed blends. This piece actually is a DuPont Kevlar based armor system. So anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. You know how they send it. It, it also gets sent to you free shipping, no matter what, everything they sell is free shipping. Um, really good stuff so i just want to take one second to kind of show you how this stuff comes to you because it's it's really well shipped and uh well packaged up. all right guys here we have the the vest unpackaged um really nice stuff as i said before this is 100 percent dupont kevlar armor in the panels uh, it's also got what safeguard calls a, a cool max outer carrier uh, which basically looks just like some perforation uh, to hope it helps wick some moisture and uh, allow you to sweat it off. This weighed about 5.2 pounds uh, when I weighed myself on the scale with it. Uh, these, as, as most easily deployable soft armors, the majority of your protect protection is in what I like to call the kill triangle. Uh, that's really set up to protect your vital organs, the heart, the lungs, the liver, uh, things like that you know you get questions about well what about your stomach what about your groin and that's a trade-off you know if you want to wear armor you're really looking to survive an encounter uh, not go up or go out looking like Iron Man so this is really trying to protect that almost in immediate fatal shot uh, this is a level 3a ballistic protection so it's good up to 44 magnum uh, these are not rated for rifle fire. Uh, to get into rifle fire, you're really looking at needing uh, a plate carrier. Uh, I won't get into all the semantics of different levels, uh, but you have some that are rated for some fast moving but low energy yielding rounds, say like 9mm, uh, potentially even 357, I think, is the level 2. 3A goes up to a 44 mag, and that's in close proximity to the vest. Uh, this vest is also set up with a stab and slash or edged weapon uh, protection. So this is really doing a dual role there. Really nice product from what I can see. 
And what we're going to get into here in a second is uh, my friend JJ over at Reality Survival has been kind enough to do some ballistic testing with this in the real world with uh, going at it with some firearms to see if it really works. Uh, just so everyone understands, the, the government body that really regulates soft body armor is the, uh, the National Institute of Justice. So it's, well, it's, it's straight up illegal for someone to sell body armor uh, and proclaim that it, it does have a protection factor that it does not. Uh, Safeguard obviously uses the, uh, the standards by the National Institute of Justice. Uh, they have several law enforcement military contracts. They're a high volume manufacturer of these things. So we know they're doing it right. So I can kind of wipe that off the table. We know the vest works and we're going to prove it here in a second for you guys. So I'll roll right into that and we'll come back and talk about a couple other things. Hey everybody, it's JJ with Reality Survival. Um, this isn't a scientific test, obviously, but uh, what I'm going to do is start out with uh, three shots, uh, roughly center of mass. I'm going to try to spread them out a little bit, and uh, then we'll take a look at it, see if there's any penetration. And if there wasn't, which I suspect there won't be, uh, then we're going to um, go ahead and hit it with ten shots, um, pretty much in the same spot and just see if we can get it to uh, basically to degrade and fail. But, and then uh, after that I'm going to take the back panel and I'm going to do a little bit of work with it with a knife. It is a, a level one edge protection. I'm just going to try to see how strong it is because uh, I'm really not sure. You know, So uh, I'm not 100% sure what to expect there but we'll see you know, how that goes. So with that uh, we're going to go ahead and fire three shots into this. We'll see how it does. All right, here we go. All right, let's go ahead and lay that back out real quick and take a look at that first. Okay. So that did not penetrate. Uh, there was a little bit of abrasion on the back side from where it rubbed up against the wood, uh, but the bullet is still trapped inside there. So let's go ahead and fire a couple more. Okay, still no penetration with the three shots, so I just kind of flattened it back out there a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and um, hit it with ten shots, just in the center. Try to get it as close as I can. It kind of balls up a little bit when you hit it, so you know we'll try to get it uh, right in that area roughly, and see if we can get it to fail. Okay, so it, it has taken 13 shots so far, and you can see where it's kind of pounding into the, to the soft wood there. And you'll notice that there are some abrasion marks, but this, this isn't, nothing came through here, uh, and I, I've, I can feel the bullets on the inside. And again, this is just because it's a hard, rough surface that I'm doing it on when it's hitting it, and it's tearing the fabric down but I don't believe that there was any actual bullet or fragmentation uh, penetration there. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do with the, uh, with the knife. So what I'm gonna do here is um, just gonna try a few slashing cuts, you know, trying to really put some, some pressure down on it and see just how difficult it is. And then I'm gonna try some puncturing, um, some puncturing moves and just kind of see what that does to it as well. Again, I've, I've never done this, so I'll be uh, learning for the first time as well. So let's just go straight down the middle. And looks like it uh, cut the outer edge, but you know the puncture resistance didn't, uh, didn't touch that at all. Obviously didn't, didn't come through here. I was pushing down pretty hard too, so that's pretty impressive. <clears throat> All right, let me, uh, I'm gonna try just a little bit harder, kind of a coming in like this and, and ripping down as well. So. Wow. Again, didn't touch it. 
That's pretty impressive. Nothing at all on the inside, and I hit that pretty hard. Okay, so this time, basically going to go straight down, straight for the puncture. And you know, as you can see, this is a uh, is a pretty pretty pointed and pretty thin blade. So we'll see what it'll do. Again, nothing at all. It's actually dulling the end of my of my blade. We we'll go one more time here and just see if I can get it <clears throat> really getting hard. And once again, nothing. So <clears throat> I was kind of interested to learn this myself. I had never seen the inside of one of these with the uh, edge protection and basically what you've got here is <laughs> essentially chain mail you know I mean it's uh, all woven together with these different uh, little rings I'm not sure exactly what they're made of if they're uh, if they're stainless steel or or what it is but it's definitely effective at uh, you know protecting you from a penetration wound I don't know what more you would expect I mean uh, an ice pick you know an ice pick might be able to get through there um, just because it could fit through the rings but you know this knife right here this is my EDC knife and you can see it actually <laughs> actually kind of dulled the edge of it there um, you know it wasn't doing anything to get past this you know, I mean, it, it was it was fine. I was hitting it pretty damn hard, so that's pretty impressive, if you ask me. All right. Well, first, I want to thank JJ for uh, doing some of that testing for us. Uh, these are not inexpensive for high level protection, so uh, it takes some guts to go out there and, and blow some rounds into one. And I appreciate him doing that for us, and uh, I hope you guys appreciate that as well. Again, these are American made. They come with a five year warranty. Uh, Soft armor again, Kevlar, we have stab and slash protection. There's like a mesh inside this carrier that I can show you guys that, uh, that helps do that. And the ballistic protection is almost 100% Kevlar. Uh, these are built to have a, a pretty high level of protection and still be light and deployable. Uh, semi close to what you would see in a law enforcement application, but I believe the stealth is really aimed more at civilian. Uh, and what you can do with it again five pounds when wearing it and as we go into the video I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this under some business attire uh, Show you this as it sits on the body uh, without anything underneath or covering it and I uh, will go from there That's really what I'm trying to point to you guys. Is this a, a viable EDC part of your complement? Uh, is it viable from a standpoint of even getting into it and wearing body armor? sometimes um, I'll touch on that as we move forward. Here we'll take a look at the back. As you can see, substantial soft armor in here. And this also gives me a chance to really point out, when you're picking armor, you really need to be reasonable on what your expected threat may be. Uh, you know, obviously you could go straight to, to field, mill grade, heavy duty armor plate uh, over Kevlar or ceramic. And it's gonna it's gonna be heavy as all get out you know so if you don't really think you're gonna be taking on you know 762 by 39 556 fire you don't really need that uh, this will handle most at least domestic crimes that I've seen uh, with handguns or handgun calibers this is gonna be perfect for you and price directly represents the level of protection so, you know, it's, it's like guns or anything else. People want to go with the biggest, most expensive, uh, most, you know, G.I. Joe mill stuff out there. And that may not really be the smartest thing to do when you're looking to deploy it often or in situations where you have to get something fast and have it on for extended periods of time. So another thing that we can look at is uh, how you, you fit it onto your body. You have some heavy duty elastic 
on velcroed by two pieces on the front this gives you a lot of good side protection because it overlaps uh, and you also have to be careful how you fit these guys or how you order them uh, if you go on safeguards website they have some pretty detailed instructions on how you need to measure yourself to make these fit uh, obviously the better it fits the better protection you're gonna get so here you have it guys uh, the vest being worn as you can see I'm a relatively tall guy around 6'1 6 6'2 6 uh, is definitely protecting the majority of uh, the kill zone area uh, you can see we have adequate side protection and you can see it's not very bulky uh, a lot more covert or a lot more tight to your body that you would see in a normal plate carrier a lot less bulk uh, but again it wasn't designed for that level of protection either um, what I've been doing with this for the past few weeks is wearing it every day all day as a, a, a part of my EDC complement and that really goes back to what I said in the beginning of the video uh, is body armor like this useful in a civilian application and uh, you know is it practical to wear is it something that you could wear uh, my opinion on that right now is you know a resounding yes uh, obviously you would you would need uh, a threat level that kind of pushed you to to want to wear this all the time it is 5.2 pounds or so of of weight on your body uh, for anybody in plainclothes law enforcement uh, contractor work, high risk contractor work, uh, intervention work, uh, doorman, uh, bank security, stuff like that. This would be an excellent option for the money. It's incredibly good protection and incredibly comfortable. Uh, just All right, folks. Well, I guess just to wrap it up, I decided to uh, give you a shot of what the vest looks like under business casual clothes. This is really how I've been deploying it for about 20 days now, 21 days. Uh, in all manners of circumstances, uh, be it walking around in public, uh, in business dealings, and I haven't been spotted yet with it. So that says a lot for really uh, how well you can conceal it uh, and, and how well it really rides on the person. I mean, if anyone was really, really, really trying to spot something, uh, you know, they could probably find a flaw. But overall, it's, it's really easy to deploy, really easy to wear. Uh, very easy to conceal and that's a big part of, of how this works for me uh, Again, I don't know if this is something I'd want to wear every day But when I am wearing it, I would like the general populace not to know that I'm either carrying a firearm or I'm wearing body armor of some type so With that said, you know, let's uh, let's have some conversations. Please feel free to bring some up in the comments if you think this is a novel idea something that would work if, if it's not something that would work uh, you know let's talk about it I, i'm really interested on in what people think about using these types of vests as uh civilians or or people in non-combat roles or not normally in combat roles i want to thank safeguard for allowing me a, a chance to evaluate this i i am very happy with the product i think it's very well built uh, obviously you saw from what jj did it, it does its purpose it serves its purpose there uh, I look forward to seeing more of these kind of products in the future. I think it's something worth talking about with people uh, that you don't necessarily have to be in a law enforcement or a, a military role to, to use and benefit from these type of products. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks a lot.